All right, all right, all right. We are back. Uh, 70s Shovelhead Chopper Survivor. Let me just update you on what we did last time we left off. Johnny and I were going over the triple tree. And if you remember from a couple videos ago, we showed that the triple tree had no fork stops, which was what? Extremely dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so extremely dangerous, hard to ride, no fork stops, silly. Also, when we loaded it up on the trailer, what we found was the forks had no compression. So they were locked all the way down to the bottom, completely compressed, so they didn't even go up and down. So in the last video, I think it was, I showed you, I took it up to Vince's, we figured out that the bushing right down here was bad. So the bushing was binding up on the tube, and that of course was just compressing down and basically locking it in place. So in the last video, I showed that we honed that out, we rebuilt that, we polished everything up. As you can see, the wheel came out amazing. If you look in there, look how clean that wheel is, man, for just sitting there. I mean, it has just turned out really great. We are not running brakes. Like I said in the last video, we're just gonna leave that, that drum empty because there was nothing inside when we got it. So we're just gonna leave it right there. We'll just run that crazy rear brake that we got now. Um, and as long as you have brakes on one wheel, I think uh, that'll be fine. Got these little uh, original fork boots right here. This is the original style. They're just like, actually, they're fork boot dust cover slash wiper. So they actually wipe that thing because inside there, um, I think I showed in the last video, there's no seal. There's actually no seal in there. The seal is actually made by this wiping up and down on it. Um, got it all together, polished it up, looks great, and it functions, which is what we want, right, Johnny? I mean, we want to, we actually want to have forks on this bike. <laughs> they go up and down. So that's where we're at. So the front end is pretty much done. When we go lock to lock, side to side, we had to cut this back. I think I showed that there. We had to trim that back to half of what it was. I, it's polished stainless steel, so I just polished it up so it looks nice. But that was twice as long, which wasn't giving us any turning radius. So now we got the proper turning radius, so we'll be ab actually be able to ride this thing. I pulled the cables inside the triple tree when we routed or rerouted everything, polished up the... Uh, the risers, polished up the bars, just trying to make them look nice. I mean, you can see it's it's been sitting, you know, it's flaking in the chrome, but we're not re-chroming anything. We're just keeping it as original as possible, just cleaning up as we go, um, because we want it to show the patina. It's original bike, it's original patina, so we're just gonna leave it. But um, come around here if you notice, or I'm gonna show you a couple things that we're gonna do, what we're gonna work on next. So we got an open primary, which I love. I love the open primary, but what I don't love about this open primary versus something like a, a BDL or the other open primaries that we've used in the past is these open bolt holes. So my first thought was, let's just throw some, you know, Allen bolts in there and just try to make it look a little nicer. But then my second thought was, uh, after talking to Johnny about it, he had, some, he had some good ideas. He said, why don't we try to build a cover? So back in the day, something that a lot of guys did was they would take the original, um, primary cover from this and they would do what's called a cut down cover. So they would take an original primary, which I went and I bought one, a junky, beat up, banged up, cracked uh, primary cover. And you can see the part number there, it's a 1970. But this one um, has this little tab right here, uh, which this one doesn't hear. So this is originally for like a for the, uh, I think it was the electric start, uh, but this one didn't have it. But you can see this cover is basically crap. Cracked multiple places, uh, broken, that's this. There we go, pieces are breaking off of it. We'll just leave that. Um, but the idea is that we're just gonna use most of it and we're gonna put it on here. So if we just line it up here, I've kind of started to trace out some possible ideas Maybe open that up, cut this back here, um, and then just kind of radius it around there, wrap it around there. And the idea is that, one, you get a little coverage, so, you know, this is pretty enclosed. It's not going to grab your pant leg, which, you know, happens on a BDL. We've all had that happen. Um, but just to kind of look cool and look like it would, like they did it in the 70s when this bike was built. And what we'll do is we'll cut it back. Uh, in the next video, we're going to, I'm going to show you how we cut these things back. Um, and then I'll just paint it up black. This looks like it was painted with semi-gloss. Uh, looks like house paint in a couple spots, but we'll spray that thing just semi-gloss paint, you know, just make it look like it was done in the 70s, just to add a little flair to it. If it doesn't look right, we won't put it on, but I just think it might be something that just adds a little bit more to this thing and makes it a little more finished. It'll show the belt spinning in there, but I think it'll just look a, a little bit cleaner than all this right here. If you look down in here, I mean, I don't, I really don't think that this all this was really 
you know, that's not that pretty, I'll be honest. It's really not. So this upper part right here, this part's gonna cover all that. And, uh, you know, I think it'll just look a little nicer. If it doesn't, we just won't put it on, but we're just gonna make it um, and then try it out. Now that we have this hole drilled and we have these two soft corners drilled, we're gonna bring it over to our bandsaw and we're gonna just follow this line and open this primary up. I don't know why. Why LA County? So we got a rough cut on this. As you can see here, what we got, this is kind of the design we started to work out. Uh, a lot of stuff needs to be cleaned up. All this has got to be rounded. I'm gonna actually carve this back into here to leave that edge. I'm gonna go along there, round out these edges. We got a nice rough cut along here. I'm gonna run a line parallel right to this, all the way from there to there. I just soften the edges here. We're gonna soften the edges there and there. And also right here, this, is the contour of our primary that we have right here. So I'm gonna have to cut this off. So this is gonna be really, honestly, a little bit hard to do. So I'm gonna start carving back into here so I can see an edge and use this will be the finished edge. That right, this, oops, sorry. This top right here is gonna be the finished edge now, not this anymore. So that's gonna uh, require a little bit of cutting back. Hopefully, my worry is right in here where it meets this edge. If you look in there where that edge right there meets this edge right here, mm -hmm. it's gonna take a lot of smoothing with the with the with the sander. So it's just gonna take a little uh, little cut and buff. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So uh, next part, I'm just gonna clean all this up a little bit more and, and start putting my lines back on it and go for the next the next level of finish. So. All right, so we got it mocked up on the bike. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool, but this part back here seems a little too large. Yeah, it I like the clutch too much. I like this. I like the front, how it's tight, but it just seems too heavy, like it sticks out too far. I almost feel like we need to just carve this much of it off. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should do it. Okay, so maybe we maybe we come to about here. here let me put, I'm gonna put a mark on it. Here. Yeah, there's just too much space in here. Yeah, too much meat like in there. Like, and I feel like before we start finishing it, I'm making it really nice. Um, we should just kind of get the the massing of it. Like, it look almost like it's it's too big. What if we cut that like this this line around it, all the way around? Yeah. What do you think? I'm gonna take it off. I'll put a line around it, and then you tell me. Look at that craziness right there. That's the edge of the bearing. 
That is crazy. Okay. Okay. Initial thoughts. I think I like it better than the other one. It's less heavy. Not 100% sold yet, but let's see. You know, sometimes you gotta try stuff, and if you like it, you keep going with it, but if it's terrible, you just abandon it quickly, <laughs> you know? But so far, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's definitely different. Kinda crazy. I don't, I don't think I like this right angle. I think I wanna pull that back. You know, maybe make that at an angle. What do you think? It's crazy, man. It is kind of crazy, yeah. right? I mean, this sort of just needs to like. Yeah, yeah, kind of dive out, in there or something, right? Like that. But I don't want to do that thing where it, you know, I lose the circle. So what if I, what if I just came at it at an angle? Yeah. yeah we'll so like that. Bob Ross, happy trees, happy life, right there. All right, but then I got to do that down here because I don't like. Oh wait, is that where our mount is? Oh, looks, okay, wait, wait. That looks cool. I can, is it you like it? I like that. ending the abruptly. I like, like the that? sharp end of there, but up here it doesn't really. Okay. All right. Let me mm -hmm. let me do that. Okay. I'll go do that, and then you tell me. I'll come right back, and you tell me what you think. All right. All right. Two quick little modifications. I smooth cut this back, which had that hard right angle. I like the hard right angle at the front, but I think we need a little smoother there transition. I left this one down here because it's really close to the mount. Johnny likes it. I agree. I agree. I trust his taste. I also took off this piece right here, which is like a little. It was a big standoff, like a little support structure piece. Let's see what we got here. Get that front one. Now remember, if this thing's gonna be black, it's gonna kinda blend in and look a little more, all right, I like this already immediately a lot better. Good call, good call. I'm gonna say that was you. What do you think? It's a lot cleaner. A lot better, a lot right? Better. It's getting better, getting better. Uh, let me step back and take a look. You know what? Hmm. I like it. I think it's good. I think it's better. And now here's the deal. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. if someone doesn't like it, they can take it off in five minutes. That's a cool look. I like it. You like it? Yeah. We're good? I think we should I think we should uh, clean it up and paint it black. Okay, let me I'm gonna hit it with the air I'm gonna hit it with the air tools now. I'm gonna finish up all this. You can see it here and it's it's kind of rough in there. We still gotta, gotta get all these sanding marks out of there. We'll finish all that, smooth out the edges, roll everything in, make it look nice and smooth. We'll show you what that looks like after. Uh, I'm gonna finish up this edge and then we'll hit it with black and we'll see where we go. Yeah. Wow, man, that took a way longer than I thought it would, but let's see where we started. Here is the original piece. <laughs> Look at that. So this is what the original was. And you can see, we just kept this outer rim here. So this, we're just gonna set aside and that's what we did here. So now there's a couple little spots here. We're gonna hit that with some body filler right here and here. That's just pitting in the aluminum. Obviously it doesn't go through. You can see it on the other side. Um, you can see that right there. That's all fine. And that little pit is like right there, not just in the casting. Uh, but we're gonna hit set that with some body filler, we're gonna prime it, and we're gonna paint it black so it blends in. And Johnny had an unbelievable idea, which is I think is so cool. Uh, for Red Ed over there, Mr. Red Ed, we're gonna paint the inside of this bright red. So even though you won't really see it much, you'll catch a glimpse of it here and there, it'll kind of reflect off there. I think you'll I think you'll get a little bit of glimmer of that red here and there, but I think it's turning out pretty nice. It, it was painted, uh, silver on top of the aluminum. So not only did we have to sand it all back, we also had to strip off the paint. We've been going at it with a wire wheel, uh, grinders, and everything. So we got it mostly smooth. I mean, that's a pretty nice finish. We could, in reality, we could polish it up and make it shiny, but I, I just don't think it'll look good with the bike if it's shiny. I think it's gotta look like someone put it on there in the 70s. If it's black, it'll blend right in and all these nice smooth shapes will look really cool. So let's put it on the bike, let's take a look. And then what we'll do too is we'll finish off these two right here with the exposed. Little Allen heads, we'll put those in there so it looks nice and finished. So it doesn't look like an afterthought. It does so, we don't want it to look like someone forgot to put a cover on it. We like so, want it to look like someone intentionally put that cover on. Oh yeah, I think that looks way better. What do you think? Yeah. 
nice and open. Good. I like nice it a lot better because from like up here you can you can see the top of the clutch. Yeah. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna raise the bike up a little bit. Here, let me let me yeah. pull this in. Check out Mr. Red Ed's chopper up in the air now. All right, let's take a look. That is. Look better? That is a really cool primer. Look better? That is definitely. I've never seen that. And, I, and even actually, when my first sketches started, that I started sketching it out, I was down in uh, Murrieta over the weekend sketching it out on a little hotel stationery, and, and they weren't even close to this. I think this looks way cooler. I mean, this angle. You're right, Johnny, and lightening this up and moving it back in from, I mean, it was all the way out here. Yeah, that you was know? too much. That was way too much and too heavy. I think this kind of pulls it in. And this will, and in the end, this is going to look like it's just kind of part of the primary one that's black. Mm -hmm. It'll look like that was the design of the, the actual primary. All right, here we are. We are back. We are next step in the primary. I just laid down a little bit of primer. You can see, remember we cut this back earlier. We just put a little primer on there and I filled in some of the big holes uh, that we were getting right over here where we get some aluminum pitting right in there. We just filled that in with a little body filler, smoothed it out a little, sanded it down, got a little aluminum primer on there, etching primer. Now the reason why Johnny is painting because I am way too heavy handed. So <laughs> if I had a paint company, it'd be called uh, Drip and Run. Drip and Run Paint. So that would be me. And Johnny is like a master painter and I'm not kidding if you see his work, it's unbelievable. Mine is just way too heavy, I'm way too heavy handed. So what we're doing now is we're gonna hit that red on the inside because we just wanna get a little bit of peak right in here, right along these edges right in here. We're gonna get the red. You're gonna be able to see it just a little bit. And we're gonna paint the outside black, but we're gonna use a spray gun. Johnny does a really great job with some nice gloss black, but right now we're just gonna get that with a rattle can on the inside. We're gonna get the red. So uh, we'll just watch the Wonder Boy over here take his, do his job. My car's gonna be red after this. Yeah. yeah. The trick with painting is that you wanna do nice, super light coats for the first one. So like, this is actually right here, that's kind of heavy for me. Like I would normally go way lighter. Like right around here, that is what I'd consider a super light coat right there. So I'd start with that, just make sure the adhesion is good. It's also a good way to check if there's any uh, leftover oil on the surface. But once this flashes, then you can start laying down your uh, medium wet coats. All right. We got our first coat done. We're gonna wait for this to flash, and then we're gonna come back and start putting on our other coats. What's up, Shugs? Give me a little barking, Shug. Make our day good. All, All right, right, guys, so we're back. This paint has uh, started to flash, so I think we're ready to start putting on our other coats. This is gonna be our medium wet coat. We're probably gonna put around I'd say two to three coats of these, probably around two. So, let's get started. Look at that, that looks great. And if this paint isn't for looks, then what it is is a, prote a protective barrier yeah. against all of the clutch dust, all of the <laughs> dirt and grime yeah. that's gonna be kicking up on it when you're on the highway. Yeah. So it's, a, it's always good to have some sort of layer of protection, yeah. because before this was raw. Yeah. You don't want to leave that. I love it. I'm glad we added it. All right, sugar. You need attention? Is that what it is? There you go. Look at that. Look at that. 14 and a half and still acting like a puppy. You are driving us crazy, sugar. Johnny had a good idea, and he never, uh, never turned out one of Johnny's good ideas. So he said, why don't we paint this edge red, which I didn't even think of at first. At first, I thought we were going all black. I thought we were just going to put a little hint of red in there. But he's actually painted that face red, if you can see that right here. Right along this face, right along there, and along all of these edges right in here. We painted that, so, you know, my thought is, we'll take a look at it, see how it turns out. Paint that front black. Doesn't look good, we'll just paint it black, but why not? So our second coat has dried, and we are ready to put on our third and final coat. Uh, you can see it already has a pretty good finish right now but there are some light spots here and there. So I just want to put one last coat on it, sort of like a you know final coat. Make sure this is all nice and smooth. 
So that is our third and final coat done. Um, before we do the uh, final black painting of the front, uh, I do want to put a nice little sand on it to smooth out because we do have little spots here from when I was spraying this edge. So I do want to smooth it out, make it more even. I'm not going to go too crazy, uh, but I do want to get it smooth because any little imperfection you will see. But um, So next time you see this, we'll be throwing on a coat of black paint. Um, it's just generic paint that I got in a can from O'Reilly's. It's nothing too crazy, but it will be the HVLP gun, you know, a little bit more control, a little bit better dry times. I think that this right now looks pretty good. We're gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and start painting it black. Let's just sum up where we're at. Johnny laid down some beautiful black paint on our cut down primer. And I just want to go back to the beginning to start where we we're talking about. I talked about how I sketched out some things when I was out traveling down in Murrieta, San Diego area. So I just went on a uh, hotel sketch pad and I just sketched out some ideas for the cut down primer. I just sketched out what a outer primer looks like on a shovel head. Just kind of came with some up as I asked ideas of what I thought it might be. This one I like the least. This one came in second place and this is the one I like the most. So that was just the idea. That's where we started. And you saw us go through the whole process, cutting it back, putting it on, trying it, doing this and that. And then we primed it, painted it. Johnny did an unbelievable job. And now we're going to take this and we're going to go over here and we're going to see what it actually turned out to be. So we're going to do the, the cheesy reveal, right? But this is where it started from our sketch. That was our idea. And this is now, like it or not, this is what we ended up with. I think it's pretty cool. I think it fits Red Ed's chopper here. Started out with a broken shovel head primary and went to this. So here it is. There you go. That's what we ended up with. I'm going to yell ta da, but that's what it ended up here. So again, Johnny talked me into doing the red inside. I think that was an awesome idea because it just picks up a little bit of red and it looks like it would have started out like this. We didn't do some crazy show paint, which Johnny can do. You know, you can put the layers of clear on it, polish it, do any of that. Instead, we just went with a single stage gloss black because that's kind of where this bike is in that level of finish. Um, I went through the box. We have a box of bolts over there. I went through and I got some black Allens just to put them in there. Just keep with the whole theme of the bike. Red Ed used that all over the place. I put some Allens right here in the unfinished bolt holes just to kind of neaten it up. And I think, if you'd say the original, kind of where we were, and that's what we ended up with. So, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I think it looks like, looks like it belongs. If someone doesn't like it, it's what, six, eight bolts, they take it off. They don't need to run it. But I think it just adds a little bit of flavor to the bike. We had to do something. You know, we tried to keep it exactly how it was when we got it. But we had to little, add a little flavor to it, and I think it's going to just be a little bit different. Uh, but something that they did all the time back in the 70s and into the 80s, they did this all the time with the cut down open primary when they ran the belt. So um, maybe leave a comment, tell us if you like it or not. Johnny, how do you think it turned out? I think it turned out great. I really love the red accents inside. Uh, you don't see it that often. I mean, you see it on this front edge here quite a bit, but you don't really see it that much until you get at the right angle and you see it. It just... I don't know, it kind of gives it a really clean look, like if there's a lot of effort put into it. I don't know, it just makes the bike look a lot more modern, a lot more thought put into it, with that red paint on the inside. Yeah, right. and I think just like anything, when you do any part and you add it to a bike, if it looks like it was always there, then it fits. If the first thing you see when you look at a bike is like, oh my God, look at those pegs are horrible. Oh my God, look at that tank, it's unbelievable. You know, if it's sticking out too much, then it probably doesn't belong, but in this case, you know, after we get it started running, riding for a couple rides, it's going to blend right in. You're not even going to notice it. Right now, we're staring at it because we've been working on it so much. But, you know, I think this is what we wanted. This is definitely the look we wanted. And if someone, like I said, if someone doesn't like it, they can take it off five minutes. But it was an original shovel uh, primary, as you could see. You saw us go through the whole process. And again, the paint's going to kind of weather in and look like it was there for 20, 30 years, just like the rest of this bike. So. Thanks for checking it out. I really appreciate it. Uh, leave comments, subscribe, do all that stuff. We'd love it. Then test ride. Yeah. Get it running. We already got it running. 
get it riding. So that's the next thing we're going to do. Um, but right now, I think we're good for this. What do you think? Yeah. Good? Think that's it. All right. Cut down primary. Red Ed's chopper. Check it out.